started fiddling around with butterfly chicken recipes about 12 years ago here in the test kitchen and I've fallen in love with the method because you get golden mahogany colored skin and juicy meat in under an hour. But Dan has taken this recipe to a whole new level by putting it in a cast iron skillet. That's right. So Julia, cast iron is the perfect material for this recipe. And there's a couple of reasons for it. One is the sides are usually pretty high on cast iron pan. So all that splattering that you normally deal with mm -hmm. with a normal skillet, you don't have to worry about. The second thing is once cast iron gets really hot, it stays that way. The flip side to that is it takes a long time to heat cast iron up. Mm -hmm. People think it heats evenly. It doesn't actually heat evenly. It's actually quite uneven. You need to heat it very slowly to get that nice even heat distribution. So to that end, we actually have it in the oven right now. So I put it into a cold oven on the lowest rack and then heat it to 500 degrees. So I preheat it with the oven. It's going to be really hot all across the board. Mm -hmm. And that takes about half an hour. About half an hour, exactly. So you don't want to skimp on that. That's really important for really good browning. So now we can turn to the chicken here. And I've got a three and a half pound chicken, which is perfect for this recipe. We're gonna spatchcock it. Mm -hmm. It's really simple to do. All you need is a pair of scissors. And by spatchcock, Mr. Fancy Pants here means we're gonna butterfly. Exactly. So what I'm gonna do is start on the back here. I'm gonna cut up both sides around the backbone and then we'll just take it out. It's very satisfying to take the backbone out of the chicken, <laughs> I gotta say. Now the real question is, what are you gonna do with that backbone? I've actually got a bag set up right here. So once you're all chickeny, you go looking for a Ziploc bag. I'm going to put this in here. Later on, I'll zip it up, throw it in the freezer. Mm -hmm. When I have enough meat, I'll make stock with it. Nice. Yeah, it's really good flavor in there. All right, so now that that's taken out, I'm going to flip it back over, and I'm going to press down on the breast and crack the keel bone just so it lays nice and flat. That way, we get browning here and here all at the same time. And then you want to turn the legs like that so that they're all kind of facing out this way. Mm -hmm. You don't want it in this way, OK? Gotcha. Make sure that's pressed down. And then I'm going to tuck the wings, just like that. We don't want those to brown too quickly. Mm -hmm. This will get nice coverage there. All right, so now I'm going to season the bird up. There's some good meat in here that we normally don't have access to when we're roasting a whole bird. So it's really nice. I want to get that with some salt. And we'll get a little pepper. And flip back over. And we want this skin to be dry so that it browns really rapidly. So I have some paper towel here. Just pat it nice and dry. And I have a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. So we're just going to drizzle this over. You don't need a lot of oil because once that skin starts to render, you have tons of fat in the skillet. Mm -hmm. This is just when it first goes in, get a nice barrier there. So just rub this in. Again, season on this side. And a little more pepper. So this guy's all set. I'm going to pull the skillet out of the oven. And I'm going to turn the oven down to 450. I had it at 500. 500 is a little too hot for the whole cook process. Now, I have a present for you. I Ooh. just discovered these. Yes, it's a silicone handle that you can slide over any hot pot handle cool. so you won't burn yourself. Nice. And it's just a note to everybody in the kitchen that that handle is hot. So this skillet is obviously really hot. just yep. came out. So I'm going to pop this guy in. We're going to go. Ooh, there we go. Sounds good, right? That's a good sound. You want to go breast side down. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're going to get the browning from the pan, not mm -hmm. as much from the oven. So gotcha. we want to go skin side down. And you said this was a three and a half to four pound chicken. I'd imagine you can't go any larger or else it wouldn't fit. Exactly. Yep, you want to be careful with that. All right, so I'm going to go into the oven. Let me get the oven for you. Thank you very much. So that's going to be in there for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. So the chicken is cooking away in there, getting nice and brown. It's almost ready. Mm -hmm. So before I pull that out, I'm going to mix up a little oil that's going to go on the top once we flip it. Really flavorful stuff, super simple. I got a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, a teaspoon of minced garlic, and a teaspoon of minced rosemary. Oh, nice. Just good classic chicken flavors. This is all about simplicity. OK, there we go. Time to pull this guy out. Oh, that smells good. It smells really good, doesn't it? I'll get the oven for Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to leave this in here skin side down the entire time, because what's happening is the heat is being transferred from the pan into the breast. We're getting a lot of moisture out, and that's dropping the temperature of the pan as well. So if we leave it in there, eventually it's going to start to sog out the skin. So we've got really good browning. We're going to flip it, and then we'll just let it dry a little bit more in the oven. OK. Ooh. That looks good. Oh, that's a looker. OK, so before this goes in, I'm going to hit it with our rosemary garlic oil here. All right, and then I'm just going to spread this around, get nice even coverage. Mm. 
Ooh, the smell of that garlic and rosemary as it hits the pan and the chicken. I know. Ooh, so it's getting it. really fragrant in here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back into the oven. Just another 10 minutes. We're looking for 165 in the breast, 175 in the thigh. All right. Ooh, oh, that looks good. That's a beauty. Now let's see if I nailed the temp here. I'm looking for 165. That's 165. All right. We Nicely got it. Done. Dan. Good numbers, good looks. Mm -hmm. Let's pull her out. I'll get the door for you. Thank you very much. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, man. Well done. Awesome, right? Yeah. So now I'm going to transfer it to our nice carving board over here. So we're going to let this rest for about 15 minutes before we carve into it. But we're not going to cover it because we want that skin to stay nice and crispy. Mm -hmm. And it's very crispy right now. I think 15 minutes is about all you can wait for this it's chicken. True. Right? I mean, it's it, just too gorgeous. It's too gorgeous. It's important, so it's rested, but we can't wait any longer. So I'm just going to carve it up. Now I notice you're using a boning knife to carve the chicken. Yes. And that's because it's a bit more flexible and the curve on the blade just makes it easier to get in there? Exactly. Yep. You get in there a little bit easier and I, I like that kind of maneuverability. Mm -hmm. You can definitely do it with a chef's knife. I actually sometimes use a paring knife to do it. Ah. You get really close in there. This is a little bit long in that way. Okay, we got some white meat there. Can I give you a little bit of both? A little bit of both. You gotta try them both, right? Yeah. I just can't get over how brown this skin is. That is it's the, beautiful. Yeah, one of the biggest reasons why I love this method. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> mm. It's just so simple. I mean, it's perfectly roasted chicken, just a little garlic and rosemary. Sometimes simple is the best mm. way, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just perfectly cooked yep. in 40 minutes. Yep. I mean, that's well under an hour. Mm -hmm. mm. That's great. It's well seasoned, mm -hmm. it's chickeny, a little bit of flavor from the garlic and rosemary, but it's all about the chicken here. Oh, nice job. Thank you. The key to a perfectly roasted spatchcock chicken is to use a cast iron skillet. Start by heating the pan up in the oven until it's ripping hot, then lay the butterfly chicken skin side down in the pan and roast it. To prevent that beautifully brown skin from turning soggy, flip the chicken skin side up for the last 10 minutes of roasting and brush it with a flavorful garlic oil. So there you have it. From the test kitchen to your kitchen, a killer recipe for crisp roast butterfly chicken with rosemary and garlic. You can get this recipe, all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings and testings and selected episodes on our website, americastestkitchen.com. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.